Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. Returning guest to the program today, E.B. Tucker. You may know the name E.B. He's been the editor of Casey Research for some time. Uh, E.B. is also a director and founder of the royalty and streaming company, Metalla Royalty and Streaming, which trades under the ticker symbol MTA in Canada. E.B., welcome back to the program. Thanks for having me. And by the way, Colin, we, we now trade on the New York Stock Exchange under MTA as well, which is quite an accomplishment. Yeah, that's right. You guys did the rollback um, so that you could get qualified much higher share price now. And you guys are one of the few who's uh, graduated to running a real company from <laughs> starting yeah. as a, a junior. That's awesome. Yeah, that's right. That's right. It's a, it's a, it's a Byzantine like experience listing on the New York Stock Exchange. I mean, you, you, I'm talking about law firms, you know, months and months and months of just, it's, it's unbelievable the, the hoops they make you jump through. But I think it's worth it because people can easily buy shares. And to your point, um, you know, you get stuck on the pink sheets at 50 cent share price. It's really hard to graduate to the, to the big leagues. For sure. Well, at the end of the conversation, we'll circle back a bit to Metalla. I know several listeners do own the stock and have certainly heard about it before uh, on our platform here. I want to start off, uh, you were telling me before we got in the interview, you're, you're actually in the midst of uh, writing, writing a book. And um, I, I'm not going to get into the details on that unless you'd like to, but uh, obviously it's uh, centered around gold. And I wanted to start off and ask you the big question, which is why gold and why now? Well, which, which ironically is the title of the book. And uh, so, so I, I, what's happening in, in my view is that this is the last chance that people have to, to move assets into something that is disconnected from what we're learning is a completely controlled economy. Um, what we're talking about in the book, you know, we, we go through history of, of how gold preserved wealth. I think it, it will shock people that y- you actually have earned more money by owning gold since 2000 than owning shares of Berkshire Hathaway. You know, gold's up 500 percent. Berkshire's up 400 percent. The S&P is only up 98 percent. So you have this myth that gold is, is, is old and, and stupid and it does nothing and it, and it returns no interest. But also, uh, bank accounts don't return interest. So, so there's, there's a lot of these arguments have solved themselves. And I don't think people have, have looked to say, well, well, this is the most important time ever because what's going to happen is we're, we're moving into this time where we no longer have recessions. We have crisis events. You know, we have a crisis every a certain number of years, and crisis and recession are very different. A recession is like a forest fire. You know, it, it clears out the undergrowth, and it allows new competitive uh, businesses to thrive and to emerge. You get rid of the waste and the bad operators. But in a crisis, it's, everything is very different because you get to decide who you save and who perishes and who goes on. And see, politicians love this because it's a controlled system. And that's what we're moving towards. Now, I don't think people recognize this, like being eaten by a python or something. I mean, I think you, by the time it's halfway up your waist, you, know, you finally figure out there's a problem. Uh, so that, that's, that's why I'm writing the book. You know, it, it, it's, a, it's a very important book for this time. The title kind of it should let people know why now is, is the big question. Um, and you need, you need to ask that question now and not wait because I don't think the I think the, the the doors are closing on your chance to get involved in gold and to protect wealth. And um, there's there's never been a time that's more important to protect wealth than right now. Evie, the uh, general public may not sense many of those things. I think the uh, listener base of Palisade Radio is aware of the fundamental issues in place and some of the factors that will lead to uh, a continued gold bull market and maybe something that uh, becomes much more than what we just call a bull market. But talk to us about the imminence of this, this call and the, the need to write this book now. What, what do you see happening over, say, the next 6, 12, 18 months that is going to make this really the last opportunity to protect oneself? 
Well, you, you saw the, the massive increase in physical premium, which tells you that the paper market is controlling the, the gold market, right? So that's, that's a huge red flag. And anybody involved here knows that, that you can do that. Now, now quickly, what do you, there's something actionable to do here. It's not, this is not just an idea. You can buy royalty stocks where you're paying seven or eight hundred dollars an ounce for gold to the ground. And when premiums are two hundred dollars, you know, for coins, it's a better time to buy royalty stocks than than physical gold, believe it or not, because you're you're paying such a premium uh, that that it, it makes it. So there's always something to do when you look at these things. But but when it comes to the the urgency, I think people need to understand that we're headed for a complete reset. I mean, literally, the government is paying people to do nothing. So I mean, you, you have bartenders and waitresses that didn't like their job anyway, that now are making more money uh, not working than they were working. Uh, the federal government uh, was running trillion dollar a year deficits, financing them by selling bonds to their own central bank. And now this year, it's going to run, uh, let's just take a guess, three and a half trillion uh, deficit, which is the entire size of, of the tax revenue last year, right? So, I mean, you're going to, sp- government might spend six or seven trillion this year. Well, we already know that, that these numbers don't make any sense. And I, what I'm explaining in the book is that um, the government can't really go bankrupt. I mean, it has the power to tax and it has the power to create money. And then its central bank buys all the, the bonds it creates. So this can go on for a little while longer. But as it goes on, what happens is the crisis events become more dramatic. I mean, what's happening right now in the U.S. is a pretty dramatic crisis. I mean, the economy is effectively closed. So, I mean, if you're not a connected business, you're in big trouble. I mean, I'm getting haircuts from someone that's that's willing to meet there after hours to give me the haircut. And it's very Soviet. And I think no one understands really what this means. But what it what it means is that each time we have a economic crisis, it's bigger than the last one. It's more dramatic. And the rules are totally different. So the rules keep changing. And and this is going to go something like next is the universal basic income where you pay people not to work. And the next is modern monetary theory where uh, the Treasury issues a trillion dollar bond, zero percent interest, perpetual maturity to the Fed. So it never gets repaid. And the next is negative rates so that if you have money in the savings account, you, you begin you are charging you. OK, so you pull that money out, do something with it. You invest it in something, you do something with it. And then and then after that comes capital controls. And then finally, after that comes, I'm going to reveal this in the book, but you're going to have a crypto dollar. And that's and that's not cool. It's not fun like blockchain, which is speculative. It's not cool at all, because what it means is that every single dollar will be tracked by the Fed and they can tell where every dollar is. They can also ask you, why are you spending so much, so many of your Fed coins on entertainment? We notice that your expenses are very high in that category. I mean, everything is under control on one centralized blockchain. See, all the blockchain people get this wrong. It, decentralization is is great. It's interesting. It's It's revolutionary. But the issue is, is that the coins, the speculative coins have just proven out the system that the Fed is ultimately going to take and implement for its own purposes. OK, so that's why the, the speculative coins in the end won't matter. You don't need you know, there's, the government's never going to have a decentralized system. I mean, they would never have like a open doors, the Pentagon, where everybody can come in there and and work on stuff and, you know, open source missile code. They would never have that. OK, so they're never going to have a currency that's open source and decentralized and for the benefit of the people. They're also not going to have a currency that you and I can get involved in printing. You know, when they started printing money, you know, didn't go out and buy a printing press and say, well, I'll, I'll print some money, too. This will be great. So that's the issue with with the, the crypto coins. There's tens of thousands of them. They're all effectively going to be worthless because you'll your your national currency. This is the only currency you'll be able to use to pay for taxes and fees and all these things. Will be a crypto dollar, and this is a this is a quite dystopian circumstance as you can imagine. But but buying gold is a chance to remove some of your wealth from that system. Okay, because th- you're definitely not going to be able to buy it once you're on. How are you going to buy it? You have to trade something for it. You know, once you're on a Fed coin system, you know, there's no way you'll be able to buy gold because it's it, it'll be completely notified. You know, every time they say, "Well, Mr. Cattell bought," you know, 
several ounces of gold. I wonder why he did that. I mean, see that everything will be recorded. I hope this makes sense what I'm saying, but it's a series of events that falls like dominoes, Colin. So it doesn't happen in a week. You know, it's each of these things happens and you can see it when you look at the big picture, you can see it happening one, one event at a time, but this is how the sequence is going to go. Yeah. Wow. Pretty bleak picture. I guess the first question that comes to mind is, do you believe that the government is using these crises as a way to lock down further? Or do you think it's one step further than that, where, you know, the, the crisis itself is, is almost self-created or sorry, created by the powers that be to, to push these things even faster. It's, 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 I mean, it's, it's the right question, but it's too hard to say whether they seized the event to, to take the action or if the event was premeditated. I'm likely to think they seized on the event. I mean, I'm, I think probably if we knew the truth, there have been other events that maybe didn't fully kick off into something in the past, but this one grabbed people. And if you, if you look at what's going on, you should read the book, uh, Extraordinary Delusions and the Madness of Crowds. It's a very interesting book, which talks about this type of behavior. People become carried away. You know, Charles McKay looks back at the tulip mania and all these different things, but people, this is, this has captivated people to the point where if you even ask, well, do we really need to shut this down? People kind of attack you. So the, the zeitgeist is, is strong, you know, when it, when it comes to this scenario. So I, at this point, Colin, I, you're not in the U.S., you're not up in the States. Well, let me explain to you what's going on. If, if, if you told people on the evening news to gather in the closet, shut all the lights off, don't eat or come out for four days, you know, for the virus, they would do it. This is how... This is how effective the the um, the messaging is around this virus. And then, you know, of course, you don't want anyone to die. So, I mean, but seventy eight hundred people, according to the CDC, die every day in America on average. So you've had fifty eight thousand people die of the virus, which I mean, it's, it's terrible. But I mean, if you start taking out the number of these people that were you know, it had had multi, multiple factors contributing to the death, you know, that all these, okay, well, look, I mean, people die. I mean, everyone listening to this broadcast will die at some point. It's a guarantee. And, um, and so there's no way that we can say, okay, every time people die, you know, we're going to shut the economy down. I mean, I don't know if you've, if you've done the math, but I, I have done the math for the book that the 2.8 trillion that the government spent in 30 days. So that's 2.3 trillion for the first stimulus. Then they brought another half of half a trillion in for a second round of, of stimulus. And this is, this is all, by the way, loans to companies. So everyone, I've never seen anyone so excited to borrow in my whole life. So everyone is now happily indebted. Okay. But 2.8 trillion divided by uh, 57, 58,000 deaths. I mean, it means that you've spent about 51 or $52 million dollars, per death. So, so you, what you're saying is, is that every person's life is worth 50 to $52 million. Okay. I, I don't know that we can back that up. I mean, I mean, <laughs> it just, you see, how, how do you, how do you ever, how do you ever function as a free market economy when, when you have this type of pressure? Well, the answer is it's no longer a free market economy. That's the answer. And I think people need to get comfortable with that. This is not a free market economy. In a free market, prices are set by buyers and sellers. The bond market's not a free market because one entity buys two thirds of all the bonds issued. That's the Fed. So that's not a free market. You know, the, the, the small business economy is not a free market because you have this warped arrangement now where, where you have all these loans, you know, issued it, it, payroll protection. There's all those names, the CARES Act. There's all these names. It's alphabet soup. You have all these names for things, and, and, and nobody backs up to realize what it is. My, my friend has an advertising agency. He told me his accountant advised him to hire his cousin, his mother. Every person with a Social Security number hired them so you can get a bigger payroll protection program loan, which hopefully will be forgiven at the end of the year. Can you imagine? I mean, this has nothing to do with advertising. That's his business, is advertising. This is now all scheming. 
this is what you do in a in a in a communist system, not a capitalist system. So I think people people need to wake up and see that this is already happening. Now, when you see that, what do you want to do if you're if you're racing towards a state controlled system? You, you want to get some of your money out of that system. I mean, it's like it's so it, it, you, you don't knowingly march towards uh, state control and think that you're going to somehow profit from it. I mean, it's, it's not going to be the case. Evie, every crisis, as you mentioned, has been more extreme than the one before it. And gold is the safe haven. Uh, Palisade radio listeners know that gold is the place to be. Gold peaked at $1,900. We're, we're fast approaching that, that old number. And you've got Bank of America out saying $3,000 gold. That shocks me that they would make that bold claim, even if I think it's going way higher. Um, where does this take gold? Uh, does it take it to a number that no longer matters? Is that how extreme this is going to be? Well, I, no. I, I, it's December of 2018. I went on Kitco and called for 1500 and it hit that August of 19. And, of course, they had me back and said, what what happens next? I said, well, next in 2020, you take out the, you take out the um old high. Okay. So that, as you mentioned, that that's happening right now. I think we'll, we'll pretty, pretty quickly take out the $1,900 high before this uh, recent virus episode. I would have told you that I thought 2,500 probably kicks off, you know, a, a big speculative mania and guys like us that have been around for a long time are starting to get concerned. And then, you know, as that goes a little bit higher, we're, we're kind of probably moving out of, of that market, at least with, you know, stocks and things like that. I've changed my mind completely. I mean, and, and this, by the way, people are always asking me specifically when something's going to happen. I try to explain to them, you, you can't know that until you see them. They would say, well, when will you sell the stock? Well, I'll know when it's time to sell the stock because you don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm buying, I bought oil, te- oil tanker stocks last month. And they're up massively. Well, I didn't know I was going to buy those until until the price of um, crude went so low and the demand went so low that I realized they're not going to have anywhere to put this stuff. But my point is is that now, after everything that's happened, my view on gold has changed. Now I see four thousand. Now, just to give you some idea of what that means, there's about ten trillion of gold in the world right now. If you just take 190 thousand tons or 193,000 tons, whatever the number is, and multiply it by the price. It's about $10 trillion, maybe a few bucks over that. So if you if you go up to 4,000, now you're looking at counting new supply, maybe you know 25 trillion worth of gold. Well, there's 260 trillion worth of debt in the world before all this happened. I wouldn't be surprised to see us at 300 trillion worth of debt. So so when you start looking at twenty-five trillion worth of gold, three hundred trillion worth of debt, this debt's never going to be paid off. There's no possible way. I mean, the best case scenario, you're going to issue more debt just to pay interest on the debt, and um, and so four thousand puts you at, at you know twenty-five trillion worth of gold. I think it sounds pretty reasonable. Yeah. Yeah, no, that that all makes sense. Well, let's finish up, E.B., with talking about Natala, a company that you founded along with Fred Heath, and you guys have done an incredible job building it up. Um, the royalty and streaming business is one that offers people not just the upside, but also uh, downside protection uh, against volatility in the gold market. Tell us uh, what's going on at Metalla now. Well, it's 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 important to make sure people know that Brett Brett Heath is the is the real secret ingredient there. I mean, I've I've as you mentioned, I've been on the board. You know, Brett was my business partner um, ten years ago or more. We we ran a precious metals fund. I mean, and, and we're very close. And uh, and and Brett is is hands down, you know, one of the most loyal and, and trustworthy people I've ever known. I mean, we, we've been together for a long time. So when he asked me to help him get this started, you know, I was I, I jumped at the chance to support him in any way I could. And that, of course, as you remember, was back um, when the market cap was, I don't know, 15 million, maybe not, not more than 20. Now it's 275 or 280 million Canadian market cap. And as we mentioned, trading on New York Stock Exchange. So here's the secret to Metalla. This, this, I tell people this all the time and they don't understand what I'm talking about, but but I think you will. The, the secret to Metalla is, is that Metalla acquires existing royalties 
on significant mining operations. So Metalla is not in the market of funding junior royalty companies. That, that is, in our opinion, that is not a business that we want to be in. So, so we've bought royalties on Newmont Gold Corp assets, um, Ignico Eagle, Pan American Silver. People say, well, how do you get these royalties? I mean, obviously, Ignico Eagle doesn't need, you know, 10 million to fund its, its mine. Of course they don't. I mean, they, they, they despise royalties, but what we've been able to do is to go to people and companies that own royalties and say, Hey, look, We've bought 47 royalties, um, of course, I think maybe 48 now. Um, we've, we've done this by offering some stock. You know, we'll mix the stock and cash. And by selling us this royalty, you, you are folding your royalty in to a more diversified, you know, holding of royalties, which, which obviously is worth more. If you look at Franco Nevada, you know, it trades at, at probably two and a half times net asset value because you have such a substantial portfolio that you, you end up with getting rid of the risk of one asset running into trouble. Okay. So, so that's how we've bought all these royalties and, and we are more active today than ever before. I mean, the, 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 the pipeline of opportunities is, is great because after closing 16 transactions, you've proven to people that you are a disciplined acquirer you, you i Colin, i cannot tell you how many times we have missed on a deal because another company has come in with a big checkbook and overpaid for the royalty and then six or eight months later they have to write down the value and so we just on the board we just sit back and say we're just not going to do that i mean we we, we are going to let things pass uh, we are not going to overpay for royalties we haven't done it we won't do it so so anyway, so, so when someone buys a share of Metal, what happens is, is they, they grab all those proven ounces in the ground on five or 600,000 hectares of, of, of mineral uh, land you know, around the free world, and, um, and they have exposure to that. And as gold moves higher, the net asset value of those ounces in the ground moves higher. And the royalty company spends money on lawyers, accountants, um, about 1,000 Square feet of office space, <laughs> and and then and, and that's it. There's no drills. There's no dynamite. There's no uh, labor unions to work with. I mean, it's a different business. You know, it's not it's not um, the business of operating a mine. And so people need to know that. Now. There's only a few royalty companies. I mean, I I, I say it's the four horsemen. You, know, you got Franco, um, you got Wheaton, you got Mavericks, you got Metal. I think those are the best companies to own. There are two or three. Uh, other companies, you know, that you can look at, I think uh, for various reasons that they've run into problems, you know, whether they get involved with operating a mine or they, they forget that they're a royalty company and start acting like a mining company, whatever the reason may be, you know, that I think there's only four that kind of meet my investment criteria and I call them the, the four horsemen. Now, obviously I think Metal is the best, but, but, uh, if, if my family member was asking me, I would say, yeah, I mean, Franco is a, is it an all time high? It probably goes higher. You know, it's, it's a, it's a well run company. I know several of the directors personally, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's an important stock for anybody interested in gold. I mean, this is not the same as your gold coins though. Okay. As you know that, I mean, this, this, your gold coins or your bars or whatever you have, that's, that's your off the grid asset. The royalty stock is your chance to have serious upside in the gold rally. Okay. These stocks are going to go very high as gold starts to move. And the reason why is because they own irreplaceable assets and that value in the ground skyrockets as, as gold moves. That doesn't happen with your coins. Your coins, your coins aren't really a speculative asset. You know, this is something you just own. It's kind of your wealth insurance. That's why you don't need a tremendous amount of, of physical gold. You need some, but you don't need some humongous, uh, position in that, you know, your, your, your stocks like Metalla, that's where you see that big upside on a gold move. Evie, well, thank you very much for coming back on the program. And uh, I want to wish you the best of luck as you're completing your first book here. I know it's a quite a process you're uh, going through, but a lot of people are eagerly awaiting it coming out, being able to read it. And we'll definitely get you back on the program uh, when it's released to talk more in depth about it. Uh, so with that being said, good luck in this Corona environment and, uh, hopefully we get a chance to do this again very soon. Sounds good to me. Thanks, Colin.
think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bid. How violent that term could be, it actually could be quite violent. Uh, it could be a rip your face off uh, uranium rally. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen?